How is everybody doing today? Welcome to Peace Freaks, episode number 86. I'm Nikki P, here as always with my lovely wife and co-host Lizzie. How are we doing today, babe? Uh, I'm here. What's up? I mean, you could be a little bit more, you know, honest about the fact that... I've got a migraine, you and it like, sucks. You look like you just want to punch me in the face so hard. Okay, I could. And damn it. But they can't really see that, so... They can't? No. You're positive. Yep. But I can see it. Okay. And it's it's burning a hole right through me. I'm sorry. You look so angry. Like, if Irma was here, you might swing her at me. I mean, that's an interesting image. I mean, like, maybe maybe you might try and swing me at me. Maybe you're just assuming it's about you and it's got nothing to do or push with me, you at all. Or push me down a flight of stairs. Maybe it's completely unrelated to you and you're just projecting. I didn't say it had anything to do with me. I hadn't even crossed that. I just, you, you look like you got the, the demon eye on you. Okay. And so I'm trying to piece together why you would have the demon eye on me. And you okay. like you want to lash out at anything that's close by, which just happens to be me right now. Okay. And we did some cleanup here in the studio. It's we a, beautiful. We get a lot more space. So maybe you're thinking that it's going to be easier to be violent with me down here now. I don't know that that was ever on my agenda to begin with. So, no. No, daddy, don't! <laughs> that Mr. Deeds? Yes. Anyways, folks, welcome to Beast Freaks. We got a fun one here for you. Uh, this is going to be an interesting episode. It certainly is. Certainly is is exactly what it is because we had Mr. Dose L E R on mm-hmm. today's episode. It's a Twitter personality, yes. Uh he's a Twitter personality as far as I'm concerned. He's a podcaster also. Yes. Um I, I did some editing work for him once. He's a nice guy. I like him. Mm-hmm. He's actually local to us too, which is odd. I mean, local people do exist who who, you know, are into some of the stuff that we're into. Some of it. Not many of them though. Not not tons, no. And I'm going to be honest, I'm just a little bit creeped out by libertarian people in real life. Why is that? Because, I mean, they could be a fed. And it's one thing to, like, see them out at, like, some festival or something and be like, hey, how you doing? But when they're actually close to home. Yeah. If they could be a fed, then it could be a problem. Yeah. Like, they know where to send CBS. Not that that I'm difficult to find. Yeah. But still. Yeah. It's it's an irrational fear I have. I get you. I get you. I feel you. I assume that everyone I talk to on the internet is a Fed. Which I think is a reasonable assumption, given some of the uh, the information we know about, you know, the people watching what goes on on the in- internet. The, the copies of the copies of the information that we put For out there. For those of you interested, we we hinted at someone disappearing not terribly long ago and wondering, man, I wonder if they were. That has actually kind of ballooned out into something. And as far as I know, we have not heard back from that person in like a far more detailed communication, hmm. like people have been looking for him. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a hell of a thing at the moment. And by hell of a thing, it's just a thing that has come up once or twice, and you know, we just take note of it. Yeah, that's all. So, anyways, as always, let's remind you to head on over to peacefreaks dot com. You can check out the show notes that Lizzie makes up because there's so much interesting stuff that we talk about. This one, I, I don't know how many links we're actually going to have in the show notes, but... This is, this is just kind of a ride that you're taking with us. You... It's a journey. Yeah. I will... I cannot take that from anyone. This is this is something. It's happened. Yeah, I don't know that there's a lot of uh, a lot of homework for to, for this one. It's just kind of... It is what it is. It's interesting. We we did some... Uh, some there's first in this interview. I, some of these things I kind of want to keep. Yeah. Like, I really, really enjoyed some of the stuff that comes up. And I'm not above stealing somebody else's programming. There you go. That's totally like my MO. Like I, I wouldn't steal nobody's, you know, money or livelihood, but I'll steal the fuck out of their IP. Okay. But you don't believe in IP. That's exactly my so, point. There you go. Can't steal something that's just mine. So uh but if you'd like, you can also stop on over there and maybe stop by sign up for the Freedom Choir. Send us a few shekels every uh every month, maybe once a year, maybe just the one time. Help us keep the lights on here in this basement. And you get access to all the uh, the bonus content. Yeah, we're having fun. We're having fun talking about stuff. Full raw interviews. And I'm going to tell you now, some of the interviews that we've done recently, there's a lot that didn't make the cut. Yeah. Um, you can you can talk to anyone who's in there. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that we do. 
And going to be more eventually here. Working on spreading our little podcaster's wings. There you go. I'm like a bird. I'm like a bird. I'll only fly away. So speaking of which, Liz, did you watch the uh, that Super Bowl halftime show? No. Why would I watch that? I don't know. To be, be, no. re- be a relevant pop nope. star? Nope. None of those things. But I did see some clips. And what was that? Uh, Shakira and uh, J-Lo. Nelly Furtado was not in it that I saw. I know. Okay. I'm just making sure. Like, did I miss the Nelly Furtado? Well, bit? It's just all about hot moms with me. I mean, and that would have been the trifecta right there. Kind of. Um, yeah, no, the amusing thing for me was that, uh, so I, people were talking about it online. And this is, I'll dedicate this to Rachel Kenworthy, or Kennerly. I actually know Rachel Kenworthy. That's why I came up. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, but Rachel Kennerly. And, you know, she was upset that it was a little uh, provocative. A little racy. Yeah. Didn't want the little boy getting too much of an eyeful. So me being the horn dog, I am like, well, sweet, like free half nude ladies. I'll go check that out. Mm-hmm. And so I look it up, and no shit, Shakira's wearing more clothes than I think I've ever seen Shakira wear in a music video. You were unimpl- unimpressed. I was very unimpressed. Like I had to go and watch that video Sh- Shakira and uh, Rihanna did together. Well, I mean, you know, you gotta understand that there are people who are a lot more conservative about you know what they watch. They let their kids watch. I guess so. But you know what the thing is, is I was actually more offended than anything at, aside from like the crappy girl power politics in there. Yeah. What's that? I was really, really insulted by that outfit that they put J-Lo in. In fact, both outfits, the outfits they put J-Lo in. Well, it was essentially the same cut of outfit. They just sort of had less fabric. They, it wasn't even that. Side. It wasn't really less fabric because it was technically, it was a nude, yeah, nude tone body stocking. But yeah, it just, I don't. I don't particularly care for the cut of the thing that they Look, had honey, her wear. she's an old lady. They're not chancing putting her in anything. Like, it's not a little too revealing. Well, I mean, it wasn't even that. It's just I I don't feel like it was a super flattering cut of a thing. Like, I don't I, think it was either. I but... like the idea of doing something structured, you know, and, like that was sensible. But just the, the, I don't know, it didn't really strike me as the most flattering thing in the world. But It was god awful. So not only did I not get to see as much skin as I would like to, and had to sit through the crappiest renditions of their, their material. Yeah, well. I also had to sit through that crappy outfit. What are you going to do? And then, like, they flash the big lady symbol on the screen, and you're just like, isn't this a football game? Yeah, I think, you know, whether you're conservative or less conservative, I, it was just disappointing. It was a disappointing uh, halftime show. Is that Whatever the, happened the conclusion? to the good old days of wardrobe malfunctions? Big old beautiful black titties hanging out. I don't know about all that. Justin Timberlake looking confused. That was and yeah. us all knowing. No, that was on purpose. Nobody wears pasties under that. I mean, bra. he looked impressively confused for someone who was theoretically in on it. Liz, I, I think I he know just looked I could impressed. Possibly by that. No, he looked real like, oh snap! This is this is a problem. This Look, is not good. Janet What's Jackson's titties here? fall out in your hand. You're telling me you're not going to be impressed? Uh, I, you know, it's been a long time since I saw any of that footage, but that expression in my mind is, is shock. And, I probably have it saved somewhere, so I'll look it up later. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to roll out of this, uh, this inappropriate talk and let's, let's pimp out a, uh, a podcast this week. Okay. Who do you, who do you think? And who sounds good? Um, I listened to that, uh, that one you were pitching me and I really liked it. I don't know what it was. It was so long ago. Front Porch. Oh, Front Porch Anarchist. Anarchist, yes. I like it. it, it he's got that homesteader vibe that I know you go for. That's what I, I thought I of do. you. I do, and uh, I, I'm told, I've, I've listened to one episode, which I really enjoyed. It was uh, pretty homestead focused, but I'm told some of his other episodes are a bit more anarchy focused, so he can kind of get the best of both worlds. I there. mean, he's just kind of that dude, though. Like, it's I, I like him because he's just kind of like a dude talking. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, if I was sitting on a porch talking to a dude, this is about what it would feel like. And it did. It uh, definitely had that, uh, I don't know, very uh, homely, welcoming vibe, which I, I could appreciate. So, yeah, there you go. You can check it out. Nice. So, I guess all the all the business taken care of, let's, uh, let's listen to this here song and then get into our interview with Dos L.E.R. But I wasn't able
All right, well, welcome, Dos L.E.R., to Peace Breaks. I'm Nikki P. here with Lizzie. Howdy. Yeah, well, I told you guys who you guys really are earlier today on Twitter, so. I know. I, I think I liked the post. I, I saw you were walking. <laughs> it looked like you were walking around outside our house. It was a little weird, um, but that's only because <laughs> you right. live you live just a little bit up the way, where yeah, it is also yeah. really crappy outside today. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, at one point, it was so heavy, like there was hardly any snow. But at one point, the snow is so heavy that I was using this little piddly, like square shovel to shovel up the snow because it was so freaking heavy. Like, no, I'm not using this snow shovel. It's well, horrible. I didn't even bother. I figured all that rain that we got on top of the snow was just going to wash it away. And now it's just slush, slushy, slush, yeah, I slush. I figured it was all going to turn to ice, and I didn't want that. So, I, is it going to be cold enough to turn to ice anytime soon? Um, overnight maybe. I don't know. I didn't look at the weather. Uh, it's, I don't think it's supposed to get down that low. So, anyways, Mister Doceliar, how are we doing today? Uh, we're um trying to destroy the universe. Uh, because I already accomplished that in parallel universe two four eight six two B three and two B eight nine two five today. So I'm just over here trying to uh work my little magic and uh you- ruin things. Do you have some mouse friends you're hiding out with right now? Mouse friends? Yes, they're uh, trying to take over the world. No, no, <laughs> no. Uh, Sur- searching for the uh, ultimate yeah. question or the ultimate answer? Uh, so, uh, no. unfortunately, no. my name is not Ian, and I have a thing for in everything that I do. Uh, like, whenever I t- tell a like, made-up story or some shit, or talk about somebody destroying the world, it's always, I always blame it on someone named Ian because of a radio drama called I God. Interesting. Yeah, I used to know an Ian. Ridiculous. He wasn't the kind of yeah, guy I... to destroy the world. He was a bass player. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, bass player Ian I know that. is a computer geek and not much else. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Ian I knew was like making luthiers tools. Last I knew, up in I believe Vermont. Ah, uh, Vermont. Mm. Moonlight in Vermont. Vermont. Yeah, we were in Vermont briefly. Yeah, I know who else is in Vermont, and I'm not a big fan of that guy. Liz's phone is still in Vermont. Somewhere in the mountains, no. in the hills. Long, long a highway. Being used by a bear, I, I like to imagine. I hope a bear. I was thinking more of the kooky old socialist. Oh well, is he in Vermont? I thought he was in D.C. Talking about Vermont. Oh, that's yeah. true. That's true. So there, with all those, you know, try, trying to make those roads that nobody wants him to make. Are are you planning on uh, planning on voting for him? You know, Let's see if you can bring uh, it all crashing down. Mm, that's that's not a bad idea, but I think uh, Joe Biden might be a better better odds on that one. Oh gosh, <sighs> no, I think I see the problem is it's like I think if, if Joe Biden wins, it's going to bring reality to a crash. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did uh, just put in when I made this uh, thing or whatever. What, what did I? I tweeted. I just put something as my. Uh, like what I'm doing or whatever, and it says, uh, "Oh, personal note: uh, stealing reality and giving you none." <laughs> gotcha. Okay. See, if this is a simulation, and Joe Biden wins, like that's the point at which you you turn the system off, right? I mean, I feel like they're at least you know showing everyone like this is clearly a simulation at that point. Well, no, no. See, there's no way this actually happened. The more interesting no thing is to have uh, Bernie Sanders win. Like, it, if you get the, sh- it's like the shitty ending of the game. You're like, fuck this. Why did I get this ending? Mm-hmm. So I, I do have, I, I do have a challenge for you though to, you know, m- make sure we get a little bit of music in here. That okay. nobody that you don't want to do. Uh-oh. So here we go. Well, you uh, can you try and sing? Uh, my, uh, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth to the tune of Bohemian Rhapsody because I was trying earlier and it was really fun. <laughs> You're trying to sing All I Want for Christmas is my two front teeth to the tune of Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had to play some background music of Bohemian Rhapsody to do it. <laughs> uh, where, let me pull up the lyrics again. Let me pull them up. <laughs> uh, cause I, I have it in my head. Everything has to be a shit show when I'm involved. So I feel no. like that would be yeah. challenging. You do you lose? You, kind of. Are you doubting me? Oh no, I'm not doubting you. I'm just trying to mentally wrap my head about around how that would sound. Okay. And it sounds ridiculous. I'm looking. I'm looking for it in here. my head. There's a harder one though that nobody's able to do that I've asked. Oh, nobody's God. able to do it. 
Okay, let's see here. <laughs> oh, this is a disaster. Oh. Yeah, no, it's not a disaster. No, at all. no, this is this is what this we is what yet. we make the show for. Okay, for this ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. My two front teeth, just my two front teeth. Gee, if I could only have my two front teeth, then I could wish you a Merry Christmas. It seems so long since I could say. Sister Susie sitting on a thistle. And we'll we'll go there because that's where the lyrics ran out. There you go. <laughs> there it is. All right. I don't I don't know that's what you're great. expecting, but uh, that, that was magical. Okay, so so here here's the one that's impossible though. Oh okay. This, this one this one's this one's impossible. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, not Eye of the Tiger. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer to the tune of Eye of the Tiger. Put my lyrics. They're way too similar to actually be able to do. Hey, you think so? This is this is the kind of challenge I can do. I can, I can take these challenges. <laughs> I want to hear someone do it because I've asked like hundreds of people over like several years if they can do it, and nobody's been able to. <laughs> I really want to hear it. I'm looking. I'm pulling them up. <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be some sort of uh something. Yeah, some sort of something. I don't, I don't think anybody's asked you to do this on your show. No one has ever I'm asked me to, but I'll take the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are, I'm looking, well, not pull, somehow it doesn't pull up lyrics first. It gives me the fucking... Like, about the song yeah, kind no, of stuff? Yeah, no, it the Wikipedia. What, what, what if we, we try and have uh, uh, Lizzie try and do it first, just because oh, she Lord. never says anything? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. I know I'm evil, aren't I? Oh. No, it's delightful. No. It's delightful. Should I go? Yeah. All right. Sorry. Off the Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. You're going to start in the middle of the song? Yes, because I don't remember how it starts. I thought <laughs> Look, that was how I, it no, starts. Hold the, no, it doesn't. Oh. Come right. on. Okay. Oh, you know Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, and Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. <laughs> but do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? I'm, I'm losing Rudolph the melody. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer <laughs> had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. And yeah, okay, fine. I concede. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody just crashed their car. I hope so. <laughs> you know, Dasher and Dancer, What's going on? Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would. Even say that it glows. All the other reindeer used to laugh and call names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Oh, that, that's so. absolutely insane. I can't believe you did that. There you go. That's why he's a professional musician. That is why I'm a professional musician. Out, out of the two of us. There you go. Now, just just to why I have a, a head start on this. Um, literally, all I did freshman year of college was sit outside my dorm <laughs> oh, and, yeah, and write right. songs about people walking past. Like, I just sit there on my guitar playing, play a few chords, and like, do 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 look at that guy in the pink shirt walking by with the girlfriend with the fat ass. No, have you ever What's heard up, of bro? this show? Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. That's where I got this idea from. I have they not. Did a girl- they did Girlfriend in a Coma to the tune of Tiptoe Through the Tulips. That's a Lizzie kind of thing there. I don't know anything about Girlfriend in a Coma. Oh, yeah, you do. Do I? It's the Smiths. Okay. It's the Smiths, yeah. And you know Tiptoe Through the Tulips for sure. Well, of course I know Tiptoe <laughs> I don't know why this tulips. is... Why, why isn't this a thing we've been doing forever? 
<laughs> because we needed we needed to have Dos Eliar on the show see, to well, introduce us to the magic that see, is what whatever the do, hell you call this. What we're gonna do in the future is I'm going to I'm gonna go through and I'm actually gonna record me doing it, <laughs> like find cool ones, and then we'll make the guests do it, and then we play yes. back like what I did. You just killing it. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I guess killing that's it. perfect. There's no guarantees it's gonna be good when I do it. I mean, that's that's all. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> right. Oh, that's okay. Fair enough. You totally do that. It's gonna be ridiculous. That's that's. Uh, I, I give you guys ideas. I know. This is an idea, man. You he know, brought, he brought the magic. I'm okay with. I've it. been looking for new content ideas from Lizzie for weeks now, and she's just kind of like, I don't know. I don't. I don't do the show. And I like, I run the house. I I don't run the show. I'm in the basement. Just I'm... walking, pacing back and forth. I should have rollerblades on, <laughs> just spinning around. He's like, you don't run the house. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I was going to say, let's, this running <laughs> the house thing seems like a, an embellishment of no, what you I'm, do. But... I'm pacing oh, around okay. the house. I should have rollerblades on since I'm just like in the basement on the cement floor. Oh, uh, that would be so cool. How is the, I mean, I it's funny is because like I, I'm seeing like your, your wiring and I'm like thinking about your wiring job very critically. <laughs> Did you do the wiring in the house? No, I did not. Okay. No, I did not. It's okay. Don't let me look in the panel. Cause I'll, <laughs> I'll just have to like. <laughs> you like look at it. It's a hot mess. Oh my god. Oh no, dude. I'm I'm one of my favorite things in the world is wire porn. Why? <laughs> I'm so glad that's a thing. Oh my god, it's the best. Get on uh, get online and just look up wire porn and all. It, it, most of it is like server racks where like guys have meticulously done wiring jobs inside server racks. Um, I like it when you when you do find the uh, the random electrical one, and you're just looking at a panel box, and like everything is just perfect. All the wires are all lined up, and neat little maids in a row. Oh, I see, it's delicious. Okay, so well, why don't you uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your podcast, there, Bosser? More importantly, tell our guests about your podcast. My podcast. Well, basically, uh, well, sometimes I start off with something like tragic that's happened in the past. One time we just stayed on it the whole time because it was a girl named Beverly Jarrows. Before my school was named what it was, what it was named, uh, she was murdered back in the 70s and it was all about her. Uh, and I read some of her poetry in it and stuff like that. But other than that, sometimes I start off with something tragic. Sometimes it just starts off chaos. But I always make sure it devolves into chaos. And that's basically the entire idea of the entire show. Uh, just see how much of a disaster I can make it. And the more of a disaster, the better it is. <laughs> Are you a big fan of the movie The Room? The Room? I have not watched it. Should I? Um. Well... It it's uh there's a movie about it called The Disaster Artist. Mm. So it just seems like something that might fall in line with your, your general idea. Uh it, yeah. Liz, why yeah. don't you tell us about The Room? I mean The Room is it's um it's a movie that this guy basically financed himself with money from some unknown source. He had like more money than he should have to, to make a movie and he basically wrote it and starred in it, and it's it's really widely regarded as the worst movie ever fantastically made. Fantastically crappy. It's just it's the dialogue is awful, the acting is awful, the staging is pretty awful. Personally, I recommend you go and find the the songified version of it. There's on... a songified version. I did not hit her. Oh, oh God. hi, Mark. That's right. That's right. Lisa, okay. Lisa, you're tearing me apart. You know what they say. Love is blind. <laughs> Let's go eat, huh? Everything is fine. Cheap, 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 cheap. Um, I it's, forgot about that. Literally, it, it, do you ever watch those like uh, what what are they called? Um, uh, bad lip syncing things. Okay, yeah. It's yeah. very similar to that, but instead of that, someone just took all of the terrible dialogue from the movie and turned it into a song. Yeah, and auto tuned it into an actual song. <laughs> Okay, so I've shared a lot of the music I'm listening to with you just because I'm bored and don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So when I'm listening to music, I share a lot of it with you on Twitter just because I can. So instead of me describing my taste in music, how about you describe my taste in music? Oh, um, okay, so... <laughs> do tell, because I don't do Twitter, so I, I yes. wasn't privy. Yeah, frantic. Frantic, okay, right on. I can admit. <laughs> he, 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 he gobbles up almost whatever you send to him. Okay. Like, he'll go and he'll listen to it, and he seems to, I'm not going to say have low standards, but he seems to have a a general interest in new. Okay, nice. 
And if you can't tell from this conversation, he's always looking for something new because I, I think his brain is going about 30,000 miles an hour and he doesn't slow down enough. And so it's just constantly got to jam something else in there to <laughs> slow, so slow, the bir- slow the bird down. Right on. Like if, the, if he doesn't jam something in there, the bird's just going to take off with the squirrel and elope. Gotcha. I mean, somebody's got to... Gotta be the, the that, first. That's pretty line accurate. Of, uh, that's pretty accurate. Of trying stuff, so so. I, I mean, I do have those that I go back to, like the Beach Boys. I you know I listen to those constantly, and then I have playlists that are literally thousands of songs long on YouTube. It's great. I, I'm still a sucker for albums. You know, I just yeah. have an album I want to yeah, hear. I, the problem with me is albums. They tend to have like a general feel. And if I'm listening to something that has the same feel over and over and over, I just get in that mood and don't get out of it for the rest of the day. Well, I use it. I use it prescriptively. Like I, I put myself in a certain place. Like recently, I keep going back to Cock Rock by Diesel Boy. Most Especially of- like like I love I love Dropkick Murphys. But like if I just continue to listen to Dropkick Murphys all day, I'd be like, yeah, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've only got like a half an hour worth of music, so I mean, there's that. You yeah, and your, they you only have one album. Yeah, I mean, you can put it on repeat, though. I mean, you can, but I mean, it's. I mean, to be honest, like, there's, there's a few highlighted tracks on that record, and yeah, it's mostly the same thing over and over again. See, I figured out a long time ago that the reason why I listen to such boring music it is because I am so high strung in general that I just I need to feel like. Life is very like chill. Do, 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 do. Yeah, but Liz, your chill music makes you want to cut your wrists. No, it doesn't because I'm too lazy to do that by then. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just going to lay in the bathtub. Like, I'd have to go and get the razor and everything. I, I'm already here. This bath is so warm. Yeah, let's what go. What you can do is, pre- is pretend that you slit your, your wrists and then convince everybody that you're back from the dead or that I you're mean, like some zombie or some shit. I actually uh, heard, I was listening to a fashion podcast and the chick like legit went on there and she's like, instead of talking about like my favorite outfit to wear, I'm going to talk about the outfit I would wear if I died and I was going to haunt people. Like, let me tell you what that outfit is. I'm curious. What is that outfit for you, Liz? I think. Well, for me? Yes. God, I don't know, Nude? honestly. No, hell no. No, I'm probably going to wear some awesome historical thing that I can't afford to buy now. Because, I mean, if you're dead, it might as well be, like, See, something she's worth a, dying she's a for, Christian, right? folks, so she doesn't believe in none of that nonsense. That's for the weird people like me. <laughs> sure. So, um, I'm curious. I don't know if you and me have ever... Weird people must take that from you and not give it back. I don't know if we've ever actually gotten into this one, boss. So, how did you find your, your way to Anarcho Twitter? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> this is a funny story. Basically, the fat cast and Rollo and Slappy, okay. but also some more like the Kato and stuff like that. Um, how did you what find any was, of that I was stuff? Pretty much right wing, pretty much listening to a lot of like conservative view view and stuff like that. And then, well, since I, you know, I have like a, a factory job, well, I'm just listening in my earbud for like eight, nine hours a day to podcasts. So I just decided one time, you know what? I'm just going to subscribe to every damn podcast with political or politics tagged in it and listen to them all and see what I think of all the shit out there. And eventually, and, and you're eventually still alive found, to tell that um, tale, people. He did not kill yeah. himself. <laughs> well, uh, Pod Save America, which I believe, if I remember correctly, was founded by the um, Obama campaign, believe it or not. Oh, good that, God. Was, that was that is still going. Uh, that podcast, it's that that I'm surprised I didn't after listening to that a few times. <laughs> oh <Uh-oh. laughs> <Ooh>, boy, <laughs> um, it sounds terrible. But somehow, Pod Save America and all that awfulness got you to Rollo and Slappy and yeah, the friends and, against government and uh, Bird Bird Arcist. That's great. Nice. <laughs> And and Bird Arcus inspired you to start a Twitter, didn't he? I'm not sure if I started it before then or after. I have no idea when I started my Twitter. How long have you? How long have you been listening to them? Um, since like the Killdozer episode. Killdozer, right? Okay. Good Lord, that's so. I don't even know when that was because I haven't been listening to him that long. <laughs> it's been, it's been, I'm assuming it's been years for him. <sighs> you know, yeah, I have to say, like, yeah. I am not a Twitter person, but there definitely seems to be like something. Like really genuinely, like I don't know, like 
fueling that people get out of it. So, I mean, good on you guys for, for finding your Twitter fam, I guess. <sighs> it's... <laughs> well, no, it's funny because, like, everybody in our group gets kicked off all the time. Yeah. And so, like, everybody's got a couple accounts. Right. That they just tweet from. I, I, everybody in every group that's not left wing does gets kicked off yeah. all the time. Just so that when I you guys get banned. Off, you I was kicked off recently for, like, literally, like, until I could refresh the page that I was just kicked off and I was back on. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what, what's his name was kicked off for? Telling somebody like, what, like they were a zombie or some shit. Okay. One time I was I was literally defending a, like not killing infants and shit, and it it kicked me off for uh, encouraging suicide or something. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I, I said it in a bit of a flamboyant way. I don't remember exactly what I said, but you know. And then sometimes you think people are kicked off for months at a time, and it's just because Twitter doesn't want you to see their stuff. Mm. Oh, that's true. That's true. I mess. I messaged Jen the Libertarian because someone mentioned her on my Facebook. I'm like, I haven't seen her tweet in ages, and I'm like, Are you like on here or like shadow banned? She's like, No, I'm still here, bro. And I'm all like, I haven't seen a tweet from Jen the Libertarian in months. Hmm. So the algorithm got you. <sighs> the algorithm gets everybody in the long run, man. See, are you are you like a video game guy at all? I I'm not. I I used to. I every now and again I play Final Fantasy One on my cell phone. Okay. Are you familiar with the Halo franchise? I know of oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's a button masher, yeah. right? Yeah, all right. So people always completely miss it, and a lot some of the stuff I really don't like because it's, like, all, you know, encouraging the state and all that. But some of it's actually, like, really good with, like, exi- with like an anarchist point of view or libertarian because, like, how the Halo 2 Spartans, the main character in the games, how they came about is literally they were kidnapped uh, for, at like age of six, thrown into a military training camp at, in which a lot of them actually died. Uh, they were flash cloned, and the parents were given these clones in the middle of the night to replace their kids that like w- that were just made to die and grow too fast and just die in a strange place that they didn't know where they were. So that's just torturing humans there. And then they go off and send them into war that they don't know anything about the po- opposing points of view or anything to quell the rebellion of the insurrectionists who want to take down the uh, UNSC that's um, like the the galactic human civilization government thing. Okay. Um, so it's actually really kind of cool that they're like, yeah, they're this bad and there's entire like podcasts and stuff, uh, like radio drama podcasts about like a journalist uncovering that and then them covering up that the journalist uncovered it. It's it's actually like kind kind of cool. There's I mean, a lot of. I'm actually very in interested there. in a podcast about a video game I don't play. Um, it, it for it, it just for the record, like I'll actually, I will actually occasionally watch video game playthroughs. Um, just because I'm like interested in the story of a game and I'm never gonna play the fucking thing. Like I I've I've done some of the Half Life. Is it Half Life or Half Life is a game franchise? I think yeah. I just recently, like a year ago, started playing Halo, but I've been a fan of the series because of like some of the books and stuff like that, and the, like the radio dramas. Yeah, for like probably like three or four years now. Nice. I mean, Liz was always more of a video game kid than I was, right? I mean, my brothers were big into it, but like literally, the last one I played was probably PS2. Like, so. but like I don't really enjoy the shooters. I just like like the lore for the most part because yeah. a lot of it is so realistic, and you don't really see anything military that in some aspects goes with what how we see the world happening because we actually see reality for what it is and aren't brainwashed. Yeah. Most of us. Or uh, we are so, brainwashed. But I'll take that reality. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's better than theirs. <laughs> I'll take exactly. Exactly. It's a lot more fun our way. How's it going? This is Nikki P and I wanted to thank you for stopping by our neck of the woods. I sure hope you enjoy listening to Peace Freaks as much as we enjoy making it. Now as much fun as it is right now, I know it can be a lot more fun. And the way to make it more fun is to grow that community. Unfortunately for us, growing anything organically on the internet is a thing of the past. And as much as I'd like to dump Irma's college fund into growing the show, that would make me a bad parent. 
So if you want to help create a bigger, more badass community, stop by UpgradeTheShow.com. We have monthly and yearly fiat options and one-time and yearly crypto options. But don't go thinking an upgraded community is all you're going to get. All patrons of the show get access to the Freedom Choir, chock full of bonus shows and our Zoom link to watch our interviews live. So head over to UpgradeTheShow.com and help us upgrade this freaky little community. Which, which pill would you take? Red pill, blue pill? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't seen The Matrix in so long. I do you think remember, it's the red pill. Do you remember which <laughs> one does which? <laughs> we, it, we were watching The, the Boys, the boys right? and uh, the, the character fucks up the red pill, blue pill analogy. He's like, I don't remember which fucking pill is which. Just, you know. Just take a pill. Quit being, a, quit, quit being a cunt, I think is what he says Basically. to Basically. And since cunt is my favorite word in the dictionary. Yeah. It's, oh it's good stuff. It was that show is just not for me, but I'm like trying to take the ride because Nikki's like, I love this thing. Please share it with me. So, and I'm like, okay, babe, I will because I love you. But and she hates gore oh, and God. everything about the show. So so it's much been fun. Just yeah. people punching yeah. holes and people. And um, what? Why? So I'm curious. How did you get into the whole like racing thing? Like, how is that something you? Uh, I was born in? into it. I was oh. in a race shop for the first time when I was like two weeks old. Uh-huh. Okay. That's so cool. like I was born into it. My great grandfather, my great grandfather raced midgets, which are now I'll just leave you wondering what midgets are. I don't even care. <laughs> no, it, those are awesome. I've seen those. I like those. Because no matter what he says, I'm assuming that his grandfather was a horrible bigot, and you still like have like a fairground <laughs> no. where he did midget racing and like midget tossing, and they were just throwing around <laughs> yes, little people. Yes. I'm gonna live in a world where that's his grandfather. Okay. So, well, that was my great grandfather. My grandfather raised sports cars in the SCCA. Okay. Okay. So he actually has a second place, like, trophy plate thing that he has uh, from uh, Road of America or Road Atlanta. Road of America. Road America? I don't know if it's Road America or Road Atlanta. But hmm. it's the second place thing from H Class Production, I think it is. And, uh, for an SCCA race, and he literally just uses it and lets it get all stained up and stuff like that as like a palette for like his cup for his coffee maker. Oh, wow. okay, <laughs> okay, get an interesting, an interesting situation there. <laughs> so I guess it kind of runs the family. Us just like not giving a shit about our trophies and shit. Okay, so do you want to? Is it something where, like you want to race someday? What, do, but, what um. Now, what I want to do, I'm working on uh, learning Adobe Illustrator right now uh, to uh, design liveries and stuff like that uh, for racing. And then I also want to design safety equipment for motorsports. Maybe as I get older, build that up into, uh, you know, designing chassis and stuff like that. Because I really feel like they need to be restructured in general in my area of motorsports. Because they've gotten faster and the suspension has gotten better and all that since, like, they're just constantly getting better with the actual shape of the chassis and how they're made. Well, little things here and there change, but they've basically been the same since the 80s, which obviously you can see where that can become really, really dangerous. Them getting faster, but not actually structurally changing much. Oh, no, it sounds like why you watch those things. Um, so that you <laughs> yeah, can... Yeah, so people die, like Ryan Claus in 2016, uh, 2017, um... Jason Johnson, 20, or was that 2018? Uh, 2019, um, so Greg is, Hodnett. So is remembering um, yes. dead racers your tism? Like, <laughs> he starts <laughs> yeah, rolling yeah. off a list of dead people. I I'm mean, like, I'm oh. sure they make sense. I mean, you could rattle off a bunch of dead musicians. Don't pretend like it's not a thing. No, I don't. I don't even remember any musician that's ever died. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I've forgotten true. them all. They're right just all now. gone. They're okay. Just, they're all alive. They're all secretly alive, like Elvis. They're oh, well, well, alive. no, no, look, look, they're not all alive, but <laughs> Biggie, Pac, and Elvis are definitely all still alive. Okay, and Paul is dead, right? I don't. I'm not gonna weigh in on that. No. So was it Tupac thing? I, I don't think I've actually ever listened to one of his songs, despite how much music I've listened oh, to. Oh well, and if you've never listened to Tupac, I personally actually say Tupac stuff's okay. Go and listen to Tupac with the Digital Underground. Because that's where the shit is. And in particular, you know, All Around the World's a good one. Um, let's see here. What's, what's in the, uh, one of the other ones that I like, uh, Liz? 
Um, but my favorite Tupac song is actually a re-release, and it's Tupac and Nas doing Thug's Mansion as an acoustic song, and it's fucking awesome. Was that released after? Liz, 90% of his catalog was released after he dies. That was the point I was making. Okay. Like, just, Biggie, just and, Biggie and pa- Pac just released so much music after they were dead, like more music than they released while they were alive. How do you do that if you're not still alive? And, like, we're talking about in, like, the late thousands. It's not like they had the computers like they have now. Yeah. Uh-huh. So here's the thing. Yeah. I'm pretty positive they're all down in Jamaica. Jamaica, huh? Yes. Okay. They said, fuck it. We're too famous. We're too rich. Let's all just go buy an island okay, off okay. of Jamaica gotcha. and just fucking smoke weed all day. So they're just yeah. down there smoking weed, fucking Jamaican bitches. I can't imagine a better life after death. And that's the key. Life after death, Liz. Uh-huh. I heard you. I heard yeah, you. Yeah, that's the key. There you go. Biggie told everybody. Uh-huh. They set that whole thing up as their way out. Because it's like... What, 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 they, they, they both wanted to get out of the hood, and they needed to do what they needed to do to make it happen. Okay. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm very disappointed in you about the uh, not mentioning on your other podcast that uh, the wildfire fires in Australia earlier. Because like, I talk to Australians all the time with motorsports and stuff like that. None of them said anything. You didn't say anything. I didn't even know those were going on right now. What? How do you? Uh, until your recent episode. Oh. Okay. I'm like, oh, okay, again? <laughs> Well, no, we, we mentioned it in the most recent episode. How the fuck did none of us know this was going on? Because it's been going on for months. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. That's what I'm saying. It took this long. It's been going on for months. Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I think it's because, you know. I guarantee had it been New Zealand, I'd have known about it. Maybe. Yeah. I just don't worry about Australia. I only like New Zealand. I feel like that stuff. Did, or or I mean, Tasmania, you know. if we found out. You know, it'd be awesome if we found out that Tasmanian Tiger was still alive. But in Australia, like in one of the like untouched parts of Australia, uh, if the Tasmanian tiger, because the Tasmanian tiger, it was the thylacine. There were a bunch of breeds all over Australia back a long time ago. And then, you know, between the dingo and hunting. And also it's thought that they had uh, tumors kind of like the uh, Tasmanian uh, devil has now hmm. is another reason that they think that it might have contributed to its extinction. Um, well, you know what else contributed to its extinction? Point, it was like all over Australia and stuff. Yeah. What? Do you know what else contributed to its extinction? What? Stupid government policy. Yeah. That's true. That's what, I, that's what I said. Yep. Because they were actually, um, th- they had a bounty on it until like a few months before the last one died in captivity. Oh, no. It's even worse than that. So like, here's the thing. You're not actually, there's a lot, like there's rules in Australia that you're not allowed to take any Australian animals out of Australia. Because they don't want them anywhere else. They want to keep Australia unique. Yeah. Like the koala and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, there's some zoos around the world that are exceptions to that. Like uh, the, the Cleveland Zoo is an exception to that because of like the uh, hospital there for the animals. Well, so, they've, like, they've been uh, they've been making the rules more lax through the well, past yeah. couple months because they're trying to get animals the hell out of there. A lot of Americans just... But I get the impression, I mean, it's it's a little too little too late, you know? Like, you, you should have been breeding populations yeah. other places long before now. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> All those syphilitic fucking koalas. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's hard to get animals to breed in captivity as it is. So, so I saw something, I don't know if it's true or not, but that they can uh, take uh, methanol out of the air, and I got very excited because... Uh, they can use like the CO2 or whatever in the air to make methanol or whatever. I don't know my chemistry that well. There is a lot uh, of but, stuff they can do with CO2 in the air these days. But like, if they can use that to make methanol, well, that, that that'll fuel you know motorsports. The only problem with methanol is it burns a clear flame, so nobody can see it, and that's why they don't use that like in the Indianapolis or anything anymore. But we still use it in sprint car racing because we're stupid and have balls bigger than our brains. Hmm. As uh, like uh, who is it? Tyler Courtney, I think, said it the best. Like last year at Eldora, which is the fastest half mile in the world, which is in Ohio. If you ever want to see it, it's freaking awesome. Huh. Uh, it's ridiculous. He said the best way around Eldora here is to throw your nutsack up over your shoulder and run the wall. Or whatever. <laughs> it's funny. Wait, why? So, would- like, yeah, the guy who can throw his nutsack over his shoulder and run the wall will win it. <laughs> it's really fast around the top of the track. Because that's where the the most banking is. Okay, interesting. And what? you know, you're going 200 miles an hour in 
so a vehicle that has like it's just basically a steel frame, uh, four tires that are outside the car that aren't any fenders, yeah. and yeah, it's ridiculous going almost two hundred miles an hour. Okay, so it's a nine hundred fifty horsepower, twelve hundred pounds. They're ridiculous vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, no, I pulled yeah. up some pictures on uh, Google, and I'm just like, that does not seem like a thing I would want to be racing in. But okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, um, look, look up uh, l- loud pedal crash oval nationals, and you'll you'll see uh, you'll see how vicious these vehicles are. Ugh, God, that sounds awful. Yeah, they're they're, they're uh, he, he, the guy wasn't hurt, but yeah, it's was... <laughs> the guy wasn't hurt. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. It happens in motorsport, but yeah. yeah uh, so, how did you get into uh, music, Nikki? Uh, I was never not. I was never. I was never not into music. And if the the oldest story I have about me and music is that my grandmother told me that I asked to give a performance when I was four years old in uh, All right. <laughs> in daycare or whatever the fuck it was that I was in preschool. And she was the one that used to take me, and the teacher asked if it was okay. I wanted to sing Bon Jovi, apparently. You wanted to sing Bon Jovi? <laughs> All right. Whoa, we're halfway there. Yeah. Living on a prayer. And then you were too cool for Bon Jovi well, for the rest well, of your life. Sh- I'm not too cool for Bon Jovi. No? I'm just too cool for shitty Bon Jovi. Oh, okay, fair enough. And R- Richie Sambora is part of the best stuff. Modern Bon Jovi is like shitty country music that my mom likes. Spe- speaking of shitty music, Remember when I sent you that uh that tweet uh where I was trying to listen to multiple songs at once and it was, it was a disaster. I mean, it it, it didn't I, I was sound. I was trying to like dissect what they were. It didn't particularly make sense to me, but uh, <laughs> but hey, whatever whatever you enjoy. Uh, I, I, have, the uh, Flaming Lips released an album where they record like they had. It required four CDs to perform or to listen to, and you had to take four CDs. It's called Zyrica, and you needed to have four boomboxes and play four CDs simultaneously. And it was actually kind of it was designed to like have four vehicles in a parking lot. Okay. Positioned, like in four corners. Well, now all I'm thinking is, how do you do that with digital music? Like, I mean, I've I've listened to. Like comp together stereo versions of it. Yeah, and I think there's a Dolby five point one version of it. Okay, but like the true way to do it is yeah. to everyone hit play at the same time on four boom boxes in a room, really high. Uh, <laughs> okay, so As th- this that's how you just so it. people are upset that they that they haven't listened to all your episodes if they haven't, especially your recent ones, which are why somebody that's listening to this hasn't listened to that. I'm not sure, but that uh, the cocktail person. She did make me. Uh, she she didn't make me think that if my kid doesn't have Down syndrome, ho- hopefully I'm thinking that like you know that that might be where evolution's going. So why don't we just start like injecting like uh, all our babies with uh, <laughs> that, that um, the extra with uh, CRISPR technology so that uh, they get an okay. extra cr- chromosome. So th- I I think I think you know it'll be a better world that way. I think so. I've actually uh, heard she, I've actually it, heard it, people it, say it, that. that. I thought about it for a second, and then I'm like, well, maybe not. But, like, how she was explaining it, I'm like, you know what? That probably would be a better world. So I did think about that for a second. I don't know. I don't know. I've I've heard people throw it around, and it all just seems crazy to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's not crazy in this world? I mean, if you think about anything hard enough, it I'll is tell you crazy. what's not crazy. Me. You. <laughs> I'm sane as hell. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Liz, were you so, going to so, talk into the mic at all? No, no, I wasn't. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna back away from the mic. <sighs> Whatever. So, so Liz, when are you going to make a podcast? Uh, I, I don't know. I'll let you know when, when that comes. Yeah. Up. We're finding ways <laughs> we'll to get there. her. We're finding ways to make her talk more on this one. Yeah, there we go. I have an idea. I have an idea. You and I go to the National Art Museum, and she's trying to shut us up. I think that'll get her to talk. So that we don't get thrown out. So oh no no, no. she'll just walk out. You yeah. just judged her position. She'll, she'll just be she'll me, like just breaking shit. She'll just be we, mortified. We, we, we should record ourselves making fun of shit at the at the Oxford Art Museum. That'd be fun. I mean that that sounds hilarious, but um yeah I don't I don't think I would want to be I, there for I'm gonna it. Be honest. I would just lose my shit and go to another part of the museum. For? I don't know that I'm allowed back. <laughs> 
<laughs> you were awesome. touching all the things. I'm putting the skies on you. You'll be fine. All the docents were like, oh my God, it's this guy again. Yeah, which is funny because it's only I, I wait a couple years before I go back every time, and they still, it's funny because like they still follow I, at the me. same time I make fun of like the art, a lot of the modern art and stuff like that. But then I'm like with my style of art, everybody loves it, and it's like I'm literally just making triangles look sexy and throwing them in, on cars. That is what I'm doing. <laughs> That's, is that is that your slogan? Making triangles look sexy. I make triangles look sexy. That is what I do. <laughs> That's awesome. I, that is that is that is the art of like a lot of good liveries these days it's like you make triangles look sexy like especially like on like sports cars and stuff like that you look for the feminine curves of the car you like make triangles and stuff that fit them uh because that's an aggressive shape then exaggerate the aggressive features of the car so it has the feminine side and the aggressive side and then it looks really good and you throw some logos on it wow you like actually put some philosophy into <laughs> <laughs> into decorating race cars. I love it. I did. It, it works. It just works. So I just make triangles look it's, sexy. It's, That's it's what the I yin do. and the yang, man. Triangle sexy man. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I'm getting the energy balance. I, I made a, G, a a Ford GT one time. Nobody got it, but I was taking, I was, I had a picture on my Instagram of the, uh, what Simba's girlfriend slash wife oh nala a of nala yeah yeah so I, so I had a picture of nala in the 4gt from the front and i'm like do you see what i see and nobody got it do you see what <laughs> so i disappointing. see wah, wah. so I, I feel like in a way i'm one of those modern artists that i make fun of all the time and it's great but then again they're like keep them bananas in the wall and i'm like eh, maybe not keep them <laughs> bananas all right buddy it is about right. that time where we got to get Liz to bed and I got to throw my kid outside. <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa. Or the cat outside. Put yeah, we'll see what happens. Or, I don't know. It's kind of like At, the, at least, at end least of the I give stones. my dog a coat. He doesn't give his uh, actual human kid a coat when he throws him outside for the night. <laughs> it's, it's like the end of the Flintstones. <laughs> That's all. Any, uh, any plugs you want to you wanna throw out there um, while we still got you? The Dose uh, is my podcast, uh, T-H-E-D-O-S. Um, and then uh, stuff, uh, everything's like The Dose, uh, my Twitter and stuff. I think I have a Facebook for The Dose. I do have a Facebook for The Dose. I don't really use it. I just use it for like in groups and stuff like that. I don't actually post anything on it. So because, yeah, I can. Uh, and Facebook's a piece of, you know what? And also, has Facebook changed your name to uh, Peace Freaks yet? Hopefully not, just because for the entertainment Oh, no, purposes. no, no, no. The, so the by the time this comes out, like the show is clearly changed. Um, what they did do was n- re- keep telling me to fuck off. And so ultimately, I ended mm. up changing the, sh- uh, the page name to Peace Freaks, formerly Sounds Like Liberty. And I assume in a month I'm gonna try and cut off the formerly part, and hopefully that'll work. But yeah, I I, I have uh, had some interesting experiences with Facebook too, uh, especially because I have multiple accounts and they don't like that, and they also don't like accounts that are uh, not actual names. So I've gotten um, some issues from that too. But usually I just stop posting things for a while, and then they completely forget about it, and I'm fine. And they don't delete my account. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They'll do the things they do. Like, if it wasn't for me and try to make money off of it, like, I, off of the advertising ability, I'd just be like, yeah, fuck the platform. I, I, if you want to throw some ads on my podcast, I, I don't charge anyone for the ads. Just nobody ever wants to put them on. And I have, like, Discord sessions on my server uh, where people can just come on and we'll have, like, a session of just making goofy ads and shit to put on, on my show. Like, uh, Dark Tom Woods is the only one that, like, ever takes me up on it. Dark Tom Woods. <laughs> Yeah, have he's you heard, on my podcast have you a heard, lot. Is he? Because yeah, you know who he's not. Huh. So, all right, Mister Dose Eliar, thank you so all much right. for coming on and enjoying this Saturday evening with us. You have yourself a good one, boss. You have fun, and do not let this be the day the music dies, because that will be the day that. Um, well, no, I the day the music the died was when Earth. Big Bopper and Buddy Holly and them died. That's true, uh, and that's why my grandfather is called the called boppers actually after the big bopper and it was a long long time ago you know what i like i can still remember <laughs> oh god oh god i don't know it i don't know what he likes 
I, I know I like Chantilly Lace, but there you, you go. know. He, he likes plane crashes. That's what he likes. He actually told the pilot to crash. Because he was an odd man. Mm. So, <laughs> he had himself a good one, bud. Uh, you too, brother. So how you feeling, babe? You feeling like uh, that was one that needed to happen? I mean, I I can definitely appreciate some of the things that happened in that interview. I uh, yeah, I'm glad that it happened. You sang. I did. It was a thing that happened. How do you how do you feel about people having heard you sang? I mean, that was certainly not me singing for singing's sake, but I guess it's fine. I don't know. I was just trying to accomplish whatever that ridiculous task he put me before me was. So and that's. Know. That you th- you look at it as just another task. Basically, yeah. Is that all I have to do is to say I challenge you to accomplish this thing? Probably. I've been approaching life completely wrong. Yeah. I, I, I keep telling you, like, I, I want to fill in the, the blank. If the filling in the blank is, you know, try and perform this this song this way, then, you well, know, I got s- at least attempt it. <laughs> well, I got some blanks. I'd love to see it fill, baby. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> you do. <laughs> Karen Gillan, Gillan for one. Hmm. Let's get a let's get a Karen Gillan over here. She's thinking about it, folks. That's that's a no, good I'm sign. No, I'm trying to re- decide if like her playing uh, the the robot chick like makes makes that weird for me. It should affect nothing. You, you've should. used a vibrator before. It's all the same. <laughs> no. Technically, it's just a better technology. Oh, good lord! I'm not. I'm feeling a little under the weather, and I'm not. She's like, there's, keep up with she's like, right there's now. nothing, nothing about me that is thinking sexy time or, <laughs> or frankly, even talking time. Oh my god! Why do you always wait until I have a headache to drop this shit on me? Well, no, it's fine. It's not your fault. You say that, but I don't believe you. I just wish I could find like any of the pain relievers that we keep in the house. They all seem to have gone missing. Well, here's the thing: I don't keep pain reliever in the house. I've never taken one, and probably. 20 years yeah so i wouldn't even know where to begin i know i get it i feel yeah it's okay like sir it starts with tylenol next thing you know you're mainline and oxy i mean i guess shoving them up your ass fucking really get them in there quick i don't know snorting them i mean you're just making it sound appealing now snorting oxy i promise you it's not appealing no Okay. I've I've lived with those people. It's not at all appealing. Yeah, no, it sounds awful. I'm being sarcastic. I should fucking hope so. Yeah. So, well, let's let's give them a reminder. Go check out the front front porch Anarchast. Some good podcasting over there. Yeah. And we're gonna leave you as always with, hey, go check out peacefreaks.com. dot com. Yeah. So, because we're I really want to start building the community around this. Mm-hmm. Our numbers have been going up. I like numbers going up because it makes me feel not so lonely. Like maybe people do care what I say. Um, but we also want to, you know, clearly know you don't. What is out there to <laughs> to uh, interact with you guys? Like what what do you like? What's working for you? What's not working for you? That kind of stuff. Well, so. we 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 sat down and we did some business a couple weeks ago. We want to be good at business. Sure. Um, and the thing that we we came up with is that I kind of we're trying to decide like what is the thing that we're trying to do with this show. And and for me, I think I'm I, my my way I'm gonna look at this from here on out is I'm, I want it to be an alternative to all those shows trying to get you to buy into the culture war because fuck that noise. I'm I'm okay being a weird hodgepodge of lefty and righty and. Like they just, like I think I'm like my personalities politically are kind of like the uh, like two girls that hook up at college 
you know, like one's kind of a right winger and wants to show dad, and the other one's like the art school girl that's I'm I'm changing lives now. Okay, you completely lost me, but I think you were making some weird sexual reference, so it seems like something you'd say. Wouldn't you know? Uh huh. Wouldn't you like to know? Uh, I get, I guess. All right, and on that note, I'm looking at her awkwardly, folks. She's not taking it well. Mm. Oh no, she's taking the headphones off and she's throwing things. You hear that? None of that is happening. <laughs> Yeah, because they'd hear it. Obviously, you're not throwing things. That's right. She doesn't honestly look like she has the energy to throw anything. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to hang in there. Um, so, yeah, thanks for joining us. And uh, go out there and, and make, make your life magical, people. This podcast is a proud creation of the Mad Audio Lab. For more information, check out madaudiolab.com. Peace Freaks is part of the Liberty Hippie Podcast Network. If you like what we do, be sure to check out Homesteads and Homeschools, Free Markets Green Earth, Cannabis Heals Me, and This Week in Liberpods. We're living proof that libertarian doesn't mean washed up Republican.